Mr. Chairman, Mr. Zuckerberg, welcome. Thank you for being here. Mr. Zuckerberg, does Facebook consider itself a neutral public forum? Senator, we consider ourselves to be a platform for all ideas. Uh, let me ask the question again. Does Facebook consider itself to be a neutral public forum? And representatives of your company have given conflicting answers on this. Are, are you a First well, Amendment speaker expressing your views, or are you a neutral public forum allowing everyone to speak? Uh, Senator, here's how we think about this. I don't believe that uh, there is certain content that clearly we do not allow, right? H hate speech, terrorist content, um, nudity, anything that makes people feel unsafe in, in the community. Um, from that perspective, that's why we generally try to refer to what we do as a platform okay, for all ideas. Let me ideas. try just because the time is constrained. It's just a, a simple question. The predicate for, for Section 230 immunity under the CB, CDA is that you are a neutral public forum. Do you consider yourself a neutral public forum, or are you engaged in political speech, which is your right under the First Amendment? Well, Senator, our goal is certainly not to engage in political speech. I'm not that familiar with the specific legal language of the, the law that you, that you speak to, so I, I would need to follow up with you on that. I'm just trying to lay out how broadly I think about this. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that, that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about the Lois Lerner IRS scandal, including stories about Glenn Beck. In addition to that, Facebook has initially shut down the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day page, has blocked a post of a Fox News reporter, has blocked over two dozen Catholic pages, and most recently blocked Trump supporters Diamond and Silk's page with 1.2 million Facebook followers after determining their content and brand were, quote, unsafe to the community. To a great many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator, let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. And uh, I, this is actually a concern that I have and that I try to root out in the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern that, um, that people would, so, would, so would let me, at least let me, wonder about. Let me ask this now, question. Are, are you aware of any ad or page that has been taken down from Planned Parenthood? Senator, I, I'm, I'm not, but let me just uh, How about moveon.org? Sorry? How about moveon.org? I'm not specifically aware of those. How about cases. any Democratic candidate for office? I, I'm not specifically aware. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. In your testimony, you say that you have 15 to 20,000 people working on security and content review. Do you know the political orientation of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review? Uh, no, Senator. We do not generally ask people about their political orientation when they're joining the company. So as CEO, have you ever made hiring or firing decisions based on political positions or what candidates they supported? No. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? That is a specific personnel matter that seems like it would be inappropriate to You just made a here. specific representation that you didn't make decisions based on political views. Well, that I, can, I can commit that it was not because of a political view. Do you know of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review, how many, if any, have ever supported financially a Republican candidate for office? Senator, I do not know that. Your testimony says it is not enough that we just connect people. We have to make sure those connections are positive. It says we have to make sure people aren't using their voice to hurt people or spread misinformation. We have a responsibility not just to build tools, to make sure those tools are used for good. Mr. Zuckerberg, do you feel it's your responsibility to assess users, whether they are good and positive connections or ones that those 15 to 20,000 people deem unacceptable or deplorable? Senator, are you asking about me personally? Facebook. Uh, Senator, I think that there are a number of things that we would all agree are clearly bad. Foreign interference in our elections, terrorism, uh, self-harm. 
I'm Those talking are about things? censorship. Uh, well, I, I think that you would probably agree that we should remove terrorist propaganda from the service. So that, I, I agree, I think is, is clearly bad activity that we want to get down. And we're generally proud of, of how well we, we do with that. Yeah. Now, what I can say, and, and, I, and I do want to get this in before the end here, is that I am, I am very committed to making sure that Facebook is a platform for all ideas. That is a, a very important founding principle of, of what we do. Um, we're proud of the discourse and the different ideas that people can share on the service. And that is something that, as long as I'm running the company, I'm going to be committed to making sure is the case. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cruz. I know up until 2014, um, the mantra or motto of Facebook was move fast and break things. Is that correct? I don't know when we changed it, but the mantra is currently move fast with stable infrastructure, which is a much less sexy mantra. Sounds much more boring, but my question is, during the time that it was Facebook's mantra or motto to move fast and break things, do you think some of the misjudgments, perhaps mistakes that you've admitted to here were as a result of that culture or that attitude, particularly as regards to uh, personal privacy of the information of your subscribers? Senator, I do think that we made mistakes because of that, but the broadest mistakes that we made here are not taking a broad enough view of our responsibility. And well, well, that I, wasn't a matter. The, the move fast cultural value is more tactical around whether engineers can ship things and, and, and different ways that we operate. But I think the big mistake that we've made looking back on this is viewing our responsibility as just building tools rather than viewing our whole responsibility as making sure that those tools are used for good. Well, I, and I appreciate that because previously or earlier... In the past, we've been told that um, platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the like, are neutral platforms, and the people who own and run those uh, for profit, and I'm not criticizing doing something for profit in this country, um, but they bore no responsibility for the content. You agree now that Facebook and other, other social media platforms are not neutral platforms, but bear some responsibility for the content. I agree that we're responsible for the content. And I think that there's a, one of the big societal questions that I think we're going to need to answer is the current framework that we have is based on this reactive model that assumed that there weren't AI tools that could proactively um, tell you know, whether something was terrorist content or something bad. So it naturally relied on um, requiring people to flag for a company and then the company needing to take reasonable action. In the future, we're going to have tools that are going to be able to identify more types of bad content. And I think that there's, there are moral and legal obligation questions um, that I think we'll have to wrestle with as a society about when we want to require companies to take action proactively on certain of those things I, and when I, that gets in the way of... I appreciate that. I have two minutes left All right. to ask you questions. So you, you interestingly, the terms of uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the terms of service is a legal document which discloses to your subscribers how their information is going to be used, how Facebook is going to operate. And, um, but you concede that you doubt uh, everybody reads or understands uh, that legalese, those terms of service. So are, is that to suggest that the consent that people give um, subject to that terms of service is not informed consent? In other words, they may not read it, and even if they read it, they may not understand it? I just think we have a broader responsibility than what the law requires. So I, no, I think I'm we talking, to... I'm talking about, I appreciate that. What I'm asking about in terms of what your subscribers understand in terms of how their data is going to be used. But let me go to the terms of service. Under paragraph number two, you say you own all of the content and information you post on Facebook. That's what you've told us here today a number of times. So... If I choose to terminate my Facebook account, can I bar Facebook or any third parties from using the data that I had previously supplied uh, for any purpose whatsoever? 
Yes, Senator. If you delete your account, we should get rid of all of your information. You should or we do. do you? We do. How about third parties that you have um, contracted with to use some of that underlying information, perhaps to target advertising uh, for themselves? You can't. Do you, do, you with, do you claw back that information as well, or does that remain in their custody? Well, S- Senator, this is actually a very important question. I'm glad you brought this up because there's a, a very common misperception about Facebook that we sell data to advertisers. And we do not sell data to advertisers. Well, we don't you, sell data to Well, you clearly rent it. Um, what we allow is for advertisers to tell us who they want to reach, and then we do the placement. So if an advertiser comes to us and says, all right, I'm a ski shop and I want to sell skis to women, um, then we might have some sense because people shared skiing-related content or said they were interested in that. Um, they shared whether they're a woman. And then we can show the ads to the right people without the, that data ever changing hands and going to the advertiser. That's a very fundamental part of how our model works and something that is often misunderstood. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate that you brought that up. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. Uh-